All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. It's straight back to the MF01X and bag B. Bag A was the rear gearbox and servo. It looks like this bag is all about the front gearbox. It will be quite similar for the most part. Let's get going. Okay, step 12, front diff. It's exactly the same assembly as the rear one, which we put together in the first build video. There's lots of goodies in bag B. We'll need the diff gears for this step the shims from this bag, the plastic bushes can go into a box of parts that will one day come in handy, maybe. <laughs> the shafts need to go somewhere, safe for later, and the screw bag can be dumped into a pot, from which we will need four of the small cell tappers. From the gear bag there's the diff case, and the gear parts tree we have the diff cover, and I think that's everything. Right then, grab one of the big diff gears and run some grease around the flat face. Place one of the shims over the end and apply some more grease and pop it into the diff case. Diff pin now, put a blob of grease on the shaft ends and slide one of the small gears on. Do all three and install the assembly into the slots in the diff case. Squirt a nice load of grease over the gears, don't worry about coating everything. Once the diff spins up it will work its way around quite quickly. We need to prep the other large gear, same as before, some grease around the flat face, slide on the shim and add some more. Drop the gear over the gears in the diff, trying to get it somewhere near central. The cap fits with its pins in the slots for the diff pin. Make sure it's lined up or the screws won't fit. And your diff will fall apart, which isn't good. <laughs> Install the three self tappers, do them up so they're all just a little bit loose, then tighten them a bit one at a time until they're all nice and snug. Standard warning is in effect, do not over tighten. <laughs> Step 13, looks like we're putting some gears in the front gearbox. We'll need the two remaining large gears, the straight one and the one with the bevel. The two steel shafts. The front gearbox half we were working on in the last video. The bearings that carry the drive cup from the diff need some inserts. Seems a bit odd though, as they can obviously mould the grey plastic with enough precision. Must be a reason though, other than adding a bit of colour to the build. Hmm. Of course, we'll need some bearings, one for the red insert and two each for the gears. The gears need a nice coat of grease. Like the diff, don't worry too much about getting an even coat, it will soon spread itself around. Just take it easy for the first minute when the truck gets running. Make sure you get some on the bevel too, it makes installing the prop shaft a little less messy later. The gears just slide in on their shafts, there's no need for any grease on the bearings, and the red insert is just pressed into the gearbox case where the diff goes. Right, step 14. We're going to need the other half of the front gearbox, the other red bearing insert, the second battery holder strap mount thing, two self tappers and a bearing to fit the insert, which can just go straight in. The battery strap mount widget slides into the side of the gearbox and lines up with the two holes. Fit the two self tappers and as usual don't over tighten them. The gearbox is now ready to put together. One thing to note though, the other half isn't too stable. You might want to build it on something non-porous and not the manual. The slightest nudge and the gears fall out and make a mess. Nice. <laughs> Step 15. We need the two halves of the gearbox, the diff, and since I've used up one of the grease tubes, we'll need to open up another. I'm going to put some more grease on the diff. Strictly speaking, the grease from the other gears will work its way over, but a little bit more won't hurt. With the diff installed, the gearbox halves can go together. They might need a bit of a wiggle to get all the shafts to line up with their holes. Don't force it. When it's all in position, it will just pop into place with just a little bit of pressure. To hold it together, we need three self tappers to fit in the three recessed holes. You can probably guess what's coming next. Yep, do them up so they're snug, but don't over tighten them. <laughs> okay, step 16. There's a few options here. The first is the short wheelbase. If we check the instructions for the body, we see we need the medium, which helpfully is on the next page. Nice. <laughs> we need 15 self tappers, quite a few. And we need the bits for the chassis. There's a few different lengths. Different combinations give you the different wheelbases. Neat. For medium, we need B10 and 11, which has the recess for the receiver, and B3 and 4, which is the short extension. The parts interlock, and even without the screws, make for a fairly stable assembly. Quality stuff. 
Carefully refer to the manual to see which holes need a screw. Turns out it's most of them. <laughs> Seven screws for the extension block. I would be inclined to leave them all just ever so slightly loose until the chassis is fully connected up. Then tighten up all the screws. This should let all the parts settle into their ideal position without building up any stresses. The extension nicely slots into the front gearbox, which gets four screws to hold it together. The rear gearbox can come back and get attached to the front end with the four remaining screws. If you left the screws a bit loose, go around and tighten them up. As usual, don't over tighten. The final assembly really is lovely. There's a little bit of a creak if you give it a twist, but that's not too surprising. It really does feel very solid. I like it. It's good. <laughs> Step 17. The prop shaft. I'll bring this up right now. The bearings in the bearing kit aren't quite the same as the bushes they replace. So the diagrams aren't quite what you end up building. I pieced it together with trial fits using the provided parts until I had a good fit and mesh. Only later did I notice there's a bit in the manual near the back looking at the option parts, one of which is the bearing kit. And in there is a nice diagram for the prop shaft build. Had I have noticed it first it would have made it a lot easier. <laughs> it always pays to read through the manual before you begin. It's a case of do as I say, not as I do. It's actually not too different. We still need most of the same bits. From left to right we have a non-flanged bearing, a B2 plastic spacer, one of the bevel gears, BB3, a drive pin, another B2 spacer and a flange bearing. Slide the flange bearing on with the flange out, a B2 spacer with its narrow side towards the bearing, a drive pin goes through the shaft, the bevel gear slots over the pin, another B2 with its large side towards the gear, then a non-flanged bearing on the end. Not surprisingly, it's the same on the other end too. You should end up with a prop shaft that looks something like this. Step 18. For this, we're going to need four self-tappers and the two bevel gear covers from the A-tree. Okay, the prop shaft should drop straight into the side of the chassis. Because we greased the bevel gears in the gearbox, we don't need more on the prop shaft bevels, which makes it a lot less messy to put together. The flanges on the bearing should drop neatly into their slots. If they don't, you've probably got them on backwards. Fully seat the shaft and make sure it all turns nicely. If it all looks good, pop bevel covers on and install the two screws on each. If it's anything like the old TL-01, with bearings you can tighten the screws as usual. But if you run bushings, you may find with the screws done up, the bearings bind. But since no one in their right mind would use bushings, that's really not a problem. You're not using bushings, right? Yeah, good. Right, that's it for bag B. Bag C is next, but I've got some grass that needs cutting, and tomorrow afternoon it's going to be raining. So it's now or never. Anyway, thanks for watching, likes are always greatly appreciated, and of course, if you want to know when the next part goes up, why not subscribe? It is free after all. <laughs> Bye guys!